a lot of what I was going to talk about is in Cully covered by, I think, distinguished uh, colleagues from CSCS. And I was just going to thank them very much for having uh, Thomas Murray present. We've got a long history in Nigeria, we've got a long history as CSCS. Uh, we'd like to congratulate you on this, uh, on this milestone and thank you very much for having us here. I think I was just going to cover off some sort of top tips to start with. Um, I mean, essentially, um, actually, I, I'm able to share my screen now. Fantastic. I'm going to share that immediately um, with you all. Here we go. Um, if we're able to see that. So I want to cover off how senior management uh, can reduce cyber risk uh, throughout their organization. So I'm going to start with some top tips. So security culture has to be set from the top. We've heard this from uh, a lot of panelists, from a lot of speakers, but it is, it is still uh, a nascent culture in organizations where CEOs, board members, both executive and non-executive and management teams are ultimately responsible for security and have some security expertise. It's essential that this now happens. I know that this is a culture which is very strong in Nigeria now. Um, that said, not all board members need to be cyber experts, but they do need to know enough. They do need to educate themselves enough to ask the right questions of the specialists and to appoint and to empower the right specialists and also to choose the right partners. And speaking of those, right, the external partners, I think a perspective that we can add to this conference, which maybe hasn't been spoken about quite yet, um, is about smart, intelligent outsourcing decisions. What should a company do in-house? In what should an organization do in-house? And what should they outsource? This you know, it's a, it's a critical decision when it comes to a, let's say, an external financial auditor to, to pick a reputable one and to pick a professional one. And it's the same in cybersecurity. Can you find a partner that's going to be able to assess your governance, your controls, your procedures with, with real world objectivity, without fear and favor, truly independently. It's incredibly important to know what to outsource and to make sure you're choosing the right partners. Those board members need objective advice, they need external testing, they need external quantification, objective quantification in order to hold security teams to account. Uh, and security teams should embrace that accountability in 2022. We, that's something we're incredibly positive about and something, you know, we speak to security teams and boards in well over 100 markets. Um, and this is something that we're coming across increasingly. I'm going to be very quick in this presentation because I think I've probably only got another five minutes or so with all of you. And I know you uh, all want to have a cup of tea, but essentially, I mean, this is this slide you're looking at now, your sort of traditional attack service on the right hand side uh, with your websites, web applications, breached employee data portals, so, you know, expired certificates, expired domains. This is stuff you all know about, those kind of vulnerabilities and unpatched vulnerabilities that you're exposing. I suppose we we want to kind of expand uh, what companies and organizations see as the attack service. So obviously digitization of services and working from home with COVID has exploded the size of those attack services. We see supply chains as a very important com component of an attack surface, an extension of a company's own attack service. We're seeing increasingly threat actors targeting systemic vulnerabilities through Log4j, through SolarWinds, through Microsoft Exchange, through VPN providers. They're looking, instead of targeted attacks on companies, increasingly you're seeing targeted attacks on systemic vulnerabilities. And you've seen the same, um, you know, you've seen a regulatory focus on systemic vulnerability in financial services with kind of globally systemically important banks and that sort of thing. You, we've got to think of the same way in security terms. You've got to identify the commonalities within certain industries. You know, in Nigeria, what you know, who are the common providers to the telecommunications industry? Who are the common providers in the financial industry? And and you've got and you've got to assess those. You've got to ensure that they have the same security standards as the organisations um, that they are providing to. It, IoT, new technologies, geopolitical politics with the disruption of markets with the exposure of supply chain vulnerabilities globally that's also increasing the attack surface for companies globally and i'd i'd very briefly mention you know there's the key facts in the top right there that 50 percent of successful breaches uh, originate with third parties you can see how that those kind of risk risk vectors materialize through a third party network you know an enterprise is 
is the guardian of its employee information, its financial information, its customer information, probably its intellectual property, many other facets of data. I think Simon mentioned earlier um, that you've got to sort of understand what your critical data is um, and, and what sort of normal behavior is before you can then identify, uh, you know, controls, procedures, and also monitoring processes for what unusual behavior looks like so you can clamp down on that. Um, supply chain service providers, as well as M&A, when you're making bolt-on acquisitions, are you inheriting potentially critical legacy vulnerabilities? These are all th risk vectors, threat vectors that people should be aware of. Now, the key theme we want to talk about quickly is, is choosing the right partners. So, Every organization, every board is going to have to make a decision between what it does in-house and what it chooses to outsource. And there will be various considerations there. You know, brain drain is one of them. Uh, you know, cost is another, expertise is another. Um, and, and buy or build is probably the final one. Do you build your own, uh, you know, defensive technologies and, and responsive technologies or do you uh, buy them? So I suppose a key point is, you know, where following the rules is not good enough. You need to play the game. C controls, procedures, policies, and governance are a huge part of cybersecurity, but cyber risk is an arms race with increasingly sophisticated threat actors constantly evolving, and organizations in Nigeria need to stay ahead. They need to play the game um, to stay ahead. So we would split this out into three buckets, quantify, respond, and improve. These are all, you can read this on uh, what I'm sharing. These are the areas in which potentially outsourcing can be incredibly effective for organizations. Can you perform your own cyber due diligence, threat hunting and systems testing? Should you be choosing a partner? Attack surface management, I'll go on to that in a moment, but objective attack surface management, independent attack surface management, that is something which is probably better to buy rather than build yourself. The incredibly nascent cyber insurance industry that, you know, there are where claims are starting to prove the market. It's not a very profitable place to be at the moment, but should you be taking cyber insurance and what should your insurance provider be giving you? Should they be linking you up with instant response teams um, for when things go wrong? So respond, you know, instant readiness, instant response, forensics and litigation support. These are, you know, potentially very costly services, potentially worth outsourcing as well. And there are many other groups, I think, at the conference today who, who've gone through some of this, uh, this responsive capability as well. And then finally, improving. So we think we see board training and board expertise, along with tabletop exercises and threat simulation as an incredibly important component um, of an organization's security. So, you know, being uh, prepared for an incident is something that a board can do as well as ordinary employees, as well as that technical response. There, there needs to be, um, you know, response and resilience and disaster recovery as a culture throughout an entire organization. You know, public relations shouldn't be ignored as part of that. Um, I would just introduce briefly our own technologies. We work with a lot of organizations throughout Africa and throughout the world um, to help them uh, get a visibility over their own attack service, to get visibility over their third parties and their suppliers. We look at a lot of geopolitical risk, but in this context, what we're doing is mapping the external infrastructure of organizations and, ref and simply reflecting it back to them. All of the websites, web applications, um, cloud services linked into their infrastructure. You need This is the sort of stuff you need visibility over in order to manage what you're exposing online, potential vulnerabilities which could be exploited by threat actors and build proactive security um, to try and prevent an attack. Um, we, you know, our risk intelligence platforms also allow you to get visibility over your supply chain, over your third parties. And as I said earlier, it's and we think it's critically important for industries to get together to share threat intelligence and to get you know, visibility over who are the systemically important providers within your industry. It could be that they're IT service providers, local cloud providers. It could be that they are you know, uh, joint providers to the telecommunications industry. But if you can identify where those systemically vulnerabilities are, then you can bring them into the scope of your own monitoring and treat them almost as an, an extension, an arm of your own organization. And I, I think a lot of what we do here for a lot of banks and corporates and market infrastructures with weekly automated monitoring of your attack surface, independent objective advice, building long-term security. And I think it's a point Simon made earlier, which is, you know, it can be very daunting, I think, for a lot of senior management when they don't come from this space to 
to understand what to do first. Um, you know, with cybersecurity can be incredibly overwhelming if you're sort of in expert. Obviously, it's the role of the experts you appoint within your organization to inform you. But it's also, I think it's worth just diving in. I think it's worth, um, you know, taking a view that you need security as a culture and starting to proactively make decisions. And I'd say one of the most important things there is to recognize that the technology vendor landscape moves very quickly just because you're with one provider two years ago it doesn't mean you know that technology might have become much more common much more enhanced in that time you should be constantly reviewing the technology so that you're not overspending so that you are genuinely implementing affordable platforms and solutions um, to support uh, your security culture and ultimately empower your individuals because as as we've established previously um a culture of operational resilience, empowering board and empowering employees, recognizing that people are your most important asset, as well as perhaps your most critical vulnerability is incredibly important. And I think I've probably gone, I've spoken quite long enough, um, but I'd end on that culture of operational resilience, which we've heard once or twice, assuming a successful attack inevitable is a truism now globally, planning accordingly is a truism globally but i think what we would add is that planning is not just a, it's not just a technical response it's not just about data recovery and system recovery it's about actually from a board level all the way downwards it's building a culture of operational resilience so that you can respond very quickly when the inevitable attack occurs and with that i will finish and i'll thank you very much again uh, for hosting me mm -hmm.